Many students in high schools in our country have had challenges in handling poetry, particularly poetry that comes in English exams. In fact, so bad is the situation that any time a student opens a, in an English paper and sees a poem, they, they begin to freeze. Actually, some of them begin to sweat and look like they have already failed the exam. But is poetry that very difficult? No, it isn't. In this particular segment, I'm going to do series of how easy poetry is very simple in English and how easy it is to pass. But first of all, I want to start with the poetry that comes in English paper one. Poetry in 1011. Remember, English has got three papers. We have got English paper one, we have got English paper two, we have English paper three. Unlike Kiswahili, where poetry can come either in paper one or paper three, in English, poetry is expected to come in paper one and in paper two. Now, in paper one, when poetry surfaces in English paper one, it comes under oral skills. Now, what is tested in English paper one <coughs> of English, uh, in English paper one, sorry, is different from what is tested in paper two. I'll not talk about in this particular session what is tested in English paper two. I'll talk about what is taught in English paper one and what is expected of you as a candidate. Now, when you meet a poem like, for example, the poem that is cast here in English paper one, one thing you need to know is this, that the examiner wants you to be able to know pronunciation. Sorry, pronunciation. The examiner expects you to know presentation on stage. Another thing the examiner wants you to know is to know what we call sounds and sound devices. These are key, uh, key areas that are mostly tested in English paper one under oral skills. The word oral, oral from use of mouth. We want to see how do you use your vocal track? How do you use your mouth to pronounce words? How do you present on stage because this kind of a poem it is expected that you can present it on stage and that is why sometimes you go into an exam room and they ask you imagine you are presenting this particular poem in in front of people let's say maybe in music festivals or you are presenting it to a group of students so they expect you to know how to present on stage and what you need to do they under presentation on stage you are expected to be able to gauge the audience. How do you know that the audience is following you? How do you know that the audience has already, already lost you or you've lost the audience? Something like that. And finally, the sounds and sound devices that have been used. I would want to start this particular topic on poetry of English paper one by starting with sounds and sound devices. Now, One thing as a student that you must know is this, that sounds in English are divided into two. We have vowel sounds and we have consonant sounds. Another thing you must also know is that most times more than one consonant sounds can produce a different can be brought together to produce a different sound we shall go there similarly more than one vowel sounds can produce one sound or a different sound we shall go there now wh where what are the vowel sounds that we have in english we have a a e o 
these are sounds. When we do like this, we are talking about sounds. Not letters. This is letter A, but sound A, depending on where you are using it. This is letter E, but it is sound A, depending on how it is used. Sometimes this letter can exist two, two times. Like for example, if we have, let, look, look at this. These are two similar letters. They are producing a different sound. So more than one vowel sound can be brought together to produce a totally different vowel sound. We shall reach there. Then this is letter I, but it's sound E. This is letter O, sound O. This is letter U, but it's sound U. Sometimes this letter, which is U, can be sound A. We'll reach there when we shall be doing those phonetic transcriptions in this particular segment or in maybe the, our subsequent segments. Let us go to consonant sounds. We have sound B, sound this sound here. It is letter C, but that letter can produce two different sounds. It can produce sound K, as in the word call. It can also produce sound s, as in cell. So we have got one vowel, one, one consonant letter producing two different consonant sounds. That all you need to know. Now we come here, we have sound d. We have sound f. Now, when we come to sound fu, we have got two consonant sounds that can be brought together to still produce this sound. Look at this. We can have P plus H to bring for us F, as in the word phoenix. You see, this is P, this is H. When they are brought together, it is producing for us sound what? Sound F. So these are things you need to know. Why am I insisting on this? I'm insisting on this because most students always fail these questions in English paper one because they go by the eye. They look at these letters using the eyes, but they don't want to derive the sounds from it. We have letter G, but sound G. Now, this sound can bring two different sounds. For example, we have gal, g, gal. The same can be giraffe. Giraffe, that is not giraffe, it is giraffe. We have sound, huh? we have J, we have K, we have sound L, sound M, sound N, sound K. Sound K, sound R, sound S, sound T, sound V. Sound w. Sound. This is letter X. But what sound does it bring? It brings S. Sound Y. Sound Z. Once you have learned as a student to differentiate between a letter and a sound, you shall have covered a good ground. Now, let us go to sounds and sound patterns. Now that we have identified the different sounds that we have, what are sound patterns? And what sound patterns do we have in English oral skills? Very important. Ordinarily, students know that the sound pattern that we have 
R1. Alliteration. Two. Assonance. Three. Rhyme. Four. Consonance. Now. Five. We have C bilance. But I want to caution students on these two particular sounds. They are no longer being tested by Kenya National Examination Council. Therefore, when you are being asked about, as you can see in the five sounds, sound patterns or sound devices that I have used, I have not included repetition. Repetition is not a sound device. Repetition is what we call a mnemonic device. Mnemonic device. Why do we say that repetition is a mnemonic device, not demonic? Mnemonic. Mnemonic simply means devices that enhance memory. Devices that, that enhance memory. So, if you are asked in an exam, mnemonic devices or how to enhance memory, it is repetition plus all this. But repetition is not a sound device. It is not a sound pattern. That one must come out very clearly. Now, let us start with alliteration. What is alliteration? Sorry. What is alliteration? I want you to know as a student that alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant consonant sounds in words that lie along a line in a poem comma close to each other separated by a non, non content word. Quite a long definition. You must not master the whole of it. The part that you need to master a lot is initial consonant sounds. Very important. What do you mean by the word initial? It means the sound that you are referring to when you are looking for alliteration must be at the beginning of the word at the beginning of the word. Number two, those words must lie along this a line in a poem. They must be along a line in a poem. Number three, those words must be close to each other. Very close to each other. Because remember, it is a sound device. And why do we call it sound device? It is supposed to be creating musicality. It is supposed to be cre making, creating some good sound, some good sound. So they need to be together. So if you are talking about b, it, we should see b, b, b. We should see ch, ch, ch. We should see r, r, r in close proximity. That is when we shall say there's alliteration. Most times it should be separated by a non-content word. This is not very important for now. I'll tell you what content words and non-content words are. Now, is it possible, having known this to be alliteration, that it is repetition of initial consonant sounds in words that lie along a, poem, along a line in a poem, close to each other, separated by a non-content word? 
Having learned this, where do students get challenge? Let's go to this poem. When you get a poem in English paper one exam, the first thing you need to do is to number the, the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, let's go through this poem. My bull is white like the silver fish in the river. So, you go into an exam room and you meet a question like this. Question one. Comment on any two sound patterns evident in the above poem for Max. Comment on any two sound patterns. In fact, let's give it for example. Yeah, let's give it four marks for now. Comment on any two sound patterns evident in the above poem. How do I go about this? The first thing that I will do as a candidate is this. Number one, I will look for alliteration. And for me to look for alliteration, I'll go through the poem to get words that, that have got similar consonant sounds. Let's go. My bull is white like the silver fish in the river. A student may want to say, Mwalimu, there is this one here, there is this one here. So because it is having this and this, this repetition, re sorry, there is alliteration. There is no alliteration in words that have repeated themselves. There is no alliteration in words that have repeated itself. So in this particular line, there is no alliteration. We go to the next one. White like the shimmering crane bird on the river bank. Bird on the river bank. Let us look at this part. We have bird in the river bank. Perfect. So you come here and you say the first sound pattern is a literation. You've identified it. So you'll score here, you'll get half a mark. Now, where is that alliteration? In mathematics, form three, you must have been taught about what you call truncation. So the easiest way to illustrate sound patterns like this one, you will have to truncate the part of the sentence or the line that you want. So you come here, you put three dots, meaning you've decided to truncate some parts of the sentence. You say bird on the river bank. Now, where is the sound? You have to show us the sound you are referring to. So you come here and you say bird on the river bank. Here you get one tick. Now, where does the other half come from? Where does the other half come from? Now, when you are told to comment, you have to identify, illustrate, and tell us why it has been used. So you come here and you say it creates musicality in the poem you get the other half so you in total you get two marks then let's see if we have what other in instances of alliteration before we go to the next sound pattern white like fresh milk his raw like Thunder to the Turkish canon. There is very rich alliteration here. I want to start with the first incident of alliteration. Look at this. Look at this. I want you to look at this here. To the 
Turkish to the Turkish to the Turkish a student may be in, may be confused to include this as part of it this is not because the these two sounds are producing sound the so this is not included so the part that will include to illustrate your alliteration is you will say to the Turkish so we have t, t, to the Turkish canon on the steep shore. I want to ask, this is S, this is S. Do we have sound S? A student who wants to use the I can say that there's alliteration here. There is none. Why? This is S tip. This is sh, s, sh, s, sh. So there is no alliteration here. My bowl is dark like the rain cloud in the storm. He is like summer and winter. Half of him. Half of him. So we have half of him. Again here, we have alliteration. Half of him light like. Again here, we have alliteration. His back shines like the morning star. This cannot be alliteration because this is sh, this is sh. and then look at the distance. Then we have his brow is red like beak of the hornbill. His brow is red like beak of the hornbill. Somebody can decide to take this. His forehead is like a flag. Forehead flag calling people from a distance. He resembles the rainbow, resembles the rainbow. All those are instances of alliteration, ladies and gentlemen. The next sound pattern that we are going to talk about is what we call assonance. But before I go to assonance, before I go to assonance, or let's talk about assonance, then we'll go to the next thing. So we have identified alliteration so well and you know how already you are supposed to be tackling the question if you're just told to identify and illustrate you only come here alliteration you tell us where it is you must know the spelling then you tell us where the illustration is you are done they can tell you to comment or they can tell you to identify illustrate and show why it has been used you need to do that now let us go to assonance here is one place where students are having a lot of challenges. Assonance. 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 What is assonance? Alliteration, we said, is the repetition of initial consonant sounds. Initial, coming at the beginning. Now, assonance is different from Alliteration. Why do we say assonance is different from alliteration? Assonance is different from alliteration because of this. Number one, assonance is the repetition of vowel. Vowel. The fact alliteration is consonant. Repetition of vowel. That is for, uh, for, for assonance. Vowel sounds in words that lie along the same line in a poem separated by a non-content word. So we have vowel sounds these sounds must be in words at remember alliteration is initial meaning at the beginning when you're talking about assonance it should be in the word it should be inside the word that lie along the same line and they are close to each other so that they can be able to produce what we call musicality very important. Now, let's come to our poem. And before we go to our poem, 
I want us to look at these vowel sounds. Vowel sounds, we have got long vowels and short vowels. We have got what we call diphthongs. We have short vowels and long vowels. Look at this. We have fill, 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 fill. We have hill. We have peak. Sorry. We have peak. Look at that. That is e, e. But we have long vowel corresponding to these ones. Like, look at this. Feel, sorry. Feel, feel. This is feel. This is feel, feel, feel. This is a long vowel. Look at this. Hill. But we have heel, heel. Long vowel. Two vowel sounds coming together to produce a long vowel. This is what I was saying in my previous conversation in this particular cast. We have peak, 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 long vowel. These are, can still be able to help us to do what we call create assonances. Sometimes one vowel sound, one vowel sound can produce two different sounds read together. Look at this. Look at this. You don't read this one as leak. But the letter is, the, the sound is E. But which sound does it produce? It produces I. So it becomes like. This is what we call a diphthong. It is producing two sounds. So don't go for looks. Go for what you can hear. Listen more than what you can see when you want to get assonance and alliteration in words. Now, let's go to our poem and see if we can be able to identify assonance. So our question was, comment on two sound patterns. So we had already gotten the first sound. So the second sound or the second one was going to be assonance. So when you state that you have identified assonance, we are going to award you half a mark. But where is assonance in this poem? Let us see. Incidences of assonance. My bull is white like. Now, I want us to look at this line. Let us extract the whole of that line. White like the silver fish in the river. There are so many instances of assonance here. Look at this. White like. So a student can come and say this assonance here, then he truncates the part that he wants. He says white like. Three dots. It means you don't want to use the other words. You underline this, then you earn your, your mark. Another student can come and say he wants to use this. Or he wants to use this. So he says, I have silver fish river. So he can come and he say, I have alliteration, yes, and I earn my mark. Then I say, silver fish in the river. Then you truncate the others, but you must show us the sound. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you identify assonance. Very simple, very direct, but you must listen more and talk less. That is very, very important. Next thing that I want us to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, as a sound pattern, is what we call a rhyme. 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 What is a rhyme? Do you know the reason why? Consonants is being faced out because it used to confuse students with a rhyme. A rhyme, we have what we call a perfect rhyme and what we call half rhymes. Sometimes words can have a full, look at this, bank, sank, 
Look at this. We have ank, ank. Very perfect. But sometimes we can have... What happens if we were to have, let's, for example, speak... Look at this, cock. Do we have rhyme here? There is, because of k, speak, k, cock. There is, so you need to listen and get the sound, because if you don't get the sound, if you don't get where the rhyme is, you are going to mess in the part of generating what? Sound, sorry, rhyme scheme. Now, a question can come and you are told, identify two pairs of rhyming words from the poem. So when you are told to identify two pairs of rhyming words, identify two pairs of rhyming words from the poem and somebody gives you two marks. How do you get the two marks, ladies and gentlemen? This is how you get the two marks. A pair means two. So we come and say, we, we look, because we want to generate a rhyme scheme. So you can check, my bull is white like the river, the silver fish in the river. White like the shimmering crane bird on the river bank. His roar like thunder in the Turkish cannon. On the steep shore. I want to ask a question. Is this roar or roar? Is it shore or shore? So I can come here and say roar and shore. This is a pair. This is a pair. Some of these rhyming words, you can pick them from the end from, from what we call end rhymes, what at the end of every line. We have his, my bull is dark like rain cloud in the storm. He is like summer and winter, summer and winter, summer and winter. Look at this. We have what rhyme there. We have his brow is red like beak of the hornbill. His forehead is like a flag calling people from a distance. He resembles the rainbow. Now, um, do we have any... We had got a brow, brow, brow. Where is brow? We saw a word like a brow somewhere. His brow, rainbow, brow. So we have brow. We have Rain, bow. So those are instances of rhyming words. But what happens when you are told to describe the rhyme scheme? Describe the rhyme scheme. Describe the rhyme scheme. When you are told to describe the rhyme scheme, Two things must happen. Number one, you must identify the rhyme scheme. Number two, you must, you must be able to declare and prove to the examiner that the rhyme scheme is either regular or it is irregular. Most students in their schools and the teachers in a very lazy way always tell students that what is a regular rhyme scheme? A regular rhyme scheme is a rhyme scheme that can be predicted. If you can predict, like for example, you have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. So because it is E, E, F, F, that rhyme scheme is regular. No. It is not only a rhyme scheme that can be predicted. A regular rhyme scheme is a rhyme scheme that can easily produce musicality without a problem. I want to give you an example. It must not necessarily be one that is predictable, but as long as it's producing, it, it, can, make, it can produce musicality. It is a regular rhyme scheme. Assume you're having words, these are ends of a line. We say stick. 
break or break. Hope. Show. Sorry. This is, let's say this, this is how the lines of the first stanza are ending. Then we have um, climb. I know someone would read this as climb. It is climb. We have sublime, tall, stall. Look at this. Stick, break, hope, show. Somebody would be looking at it and say, ah, no, there is hope, show, climb, sublime, tall, stall. So somebody says this is A, A, B, B, C, C. This is D, D. This is quite predictable. Stick, break, hope. Show, climb, sublime, tall, stall. You can see it brings an element of musicality. If the next words would be different from following this particular pattern, but you can still see musicality coming out, the rhyme scheme is regular. It must not just be a rhyme scheme that can be predicted. So that one, as a student, you must now know. Now, let us generate... How do we generate, how do we come up with a rhyme scheme? This is how you come up with a rhyme scheme. Words that are rhyming are accorded similar uh, alphabetical, uh, I, uh, alphabetical uh, letters, starting with the first alphabetical letter. So when we look at this, this is river, we give it A, bank, B, because it is not, it is not rhyming with, with river. We come here, milk, we have bank milk so we have b this is rhyming with the other one so it is b we have canon canon it is not rhyming with the other one so we give it the next one which is c we have sure sure it is not rhyming with anyone we give it d we have storm 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 is it rhyming with anyone it is not rhyming with anyone give it e we have winter winter river winter we give it a cloud 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 we give it f we have shine shine canon shine so we give it canon we give c we have star river winter star so river we give a we have hornbill where did we stop we stopped at f so this becomes g we have distance distance this becomes h we have rainbow rainbow so this becomes i now look you transfer these letters into your work so what is the rhyme scheme sometimes as a student the easiest way to transfer the rhyme scheme is looking at how these stanzas are so we have one two three four five so you come and you say a b B, C, D. This is the first stanza. Then you can decide to create a, a space. Even if you don't create, nobody is going to punish you. You come here, you say this is E, this is A, this is F, this is C. Then you go to the next stanza. You say this is A, this is G, this is H, this is I. This is your rhyme scheme. So up to this level, you get one mark. Now, uh, or, or definitely, as you can see, even it will, you are not even able to bring musicality out of this. So you say irregular rhyme scheme. Then you earn. I know there are some students who are always told you must write this, then write irregular rhyme scheme, then you add the next pattern cannot be predicted. Leave that part alone. It is not necessary. It does not score. It is not the only parameter that you can use to come up with a rhyme scheme. Ladies and gentlemen, what we are discussing, we are discussing English paper one, which is very, very 
practical very very interesting now i now want to go to the next part which is going to be the last segment of this particular presentation or the second last segment of this particular presentation which is going to be the, seg the segment of presentation 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 how to present this poem in a classroom situation somebody asks you this how would you how would you or rather before we go there okay 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 let's go there how would you say let's say uh let's choose a line here let's choose a line here which line can we take which line can we take here maybe we can decide to take line five say line five three marks i want you to look at me when i stand like is it possible for me to come to class and stand like this and just talk with my face like this no every time when people talk you see something happening with their hands you can see the body moving you can see something happening on my face when you are saying something we see you acting as a student when you are asked how would you say you need to consider the following you need to consider verbal cues you need to consider non verbal cues what are verbal cues verbal cues are the aspects of our vocal track that we use when we are pronouncing words which ones are they they include stress they include intonation falling intonation rising intonation we have tonal variation tonal variation we have pause we have pace when i talk about verbal cues only in reference to your vocal track when i talk about non verbal cues we are talking about facial expression facial expression we are talking about body movement it is not body it is body one day you will go into an exam room and you say you are given a word like this supply another word that is pronounced the same as this if you continue re-pronouncing it as body you will not get another word but it is supposed to be body so you say somebody nobody you don't say somebody so we say body movement we have what we call gestures gestures these are the most important cues that you need to use. But let me tell you something. Let me steal a secret to you that can make you easily pass exams. Every time you are asked, how will you say, look at the marks. When you are told, how will you say, you give the higher percentage of this to the verbal cue. So like if this is three marks, you'll give two points for verbal cue, one point for non-verbal. If you will be asked how would you perform, you would give two points to non-verbal cue, one point to the verbal cue. We'll reach to that level, we'll reach that level of how will you perform. Now, another thing you need to know, if for example, let's say you are given two marks. So if you are given two marks, definitely you'll give one point. You cannot score all marks by just stating verbal cues. You must mix verbal cue and non-verbal cues. And I always tell students, that the easiest way to score something like this go to that line that you have been referred to and start with stress look for start with stress now what why why do i why do i say so you remember when you were in form one there's this answer that you would always give easily without even blinking your eye somebody would ask you what are the, what what are some of the uh, benefits or importances of studying chemistry, Sakaria subject, studying business studies, 
you will write that one without even thinking for the second for the next think before thinking the next answer what am i trying to say free pass how do you say go to that line look for stress which words do you stress in a line you stress what we call uh content words we stress what we call content words so which are these content words content words are nouns we have action verbs action verbs we have adverbs we have adjectives we have pronouns mostly these are the no the 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 the, 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 the content words that we have in a line so every time you are asked how would you say how would you say the first thing is run to stress that is simplest one so let's go to line five on the steep 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 adjective show noun so this is how you say how would you say how would you say line five so i come here and say I would, how would you, how will you, I will, how would you, I would. So you say, I would stress content words like steep and sure. Tick. This kind of a question you don't score until you tell us why you will do something. Why would you stress these words? You would stress these words because they are content words. So with that, you get the first mark. Now, number two. Remember, we are given three marks. So because we are given three marks and we ask how would we say, we give preeminence or we give, we give a lot of attention to what? To uh, uh, what we call verbal cues now let us look at this word it has got a full stop at the end remember we have uh, it is coming at the end of this particular stanza and has a full stop so now we want to use intonation or we can use tonal variation or we can use pause let us go to pause because it has got a full stop always look at what is at the end of the line so here you say, number two, I would pause at the end of the line to allow me move to the next stanza. Or you can say line, tick, why would you pause? You would pause so that it can allow you. You say, on the steep shore. You pause, then you go, my bull is dark like. So you pause so that you come here. Another student can come and say, I would want to use what we call what? Uh, intonation. So here, would you use falling intonation or would you use rising intonation? You know when to use falling intonation. You know when to use rising intonation. You will have to do that now. You have already identified two answers of the three that is needed. The two of them are stress and pause. All of them are verbal. And remember we said you cannot speak without acting. So the third answer should come this side. Now it is you to decide on the steep show. So what do you do? On the steep show. On the steep show. So don't say... I, what are facial expression? Now, the difference between these verbal cues and non-verbal cues when they are used in exams or in writing answers is this. These ones you are allowed to mention. You can, you can see we are mentioning pause, we are mentioning stress. Here, you are no, must not mention, you must tell us what you will do. So you said, what are facial expression? How you use your face, you can decide to frown it or widen it or make it, you make your face look happy. Body movement is now what we are talking about, you see? Now this is body movement, you see? When you are shaking, when you are shaking your head, that is body movement because your head is part of your body. Now when you are talking about gestures, gestures, most students think that gestures is use of how you are 
you are winking on whatever gestures is how you use your arms and your fingers this is what we call gesturing out gesture come you see this is now gesturing so gestures now when we are looking for the answer of number three we want to use gestures how do you use gestures on the steep slope so you say i would use or i would point downwards to illustrate a steep show i would point downwards to illustrate a steep show you have told us what you will do and why you will do it if you don't tell us why you will do something we will not give you a mark now an examiner again comes and asks you how would you perform line 13 how would you would you perform line 13 he gives you three marks now this time is perform not say when you are told to perform three marks it means two marks on non-verbal one mark on verbal but as usual we can always start with what verbal and we said the easiest one is what stress so this is what we say we come here and we look at resembles verb rainbow noun so the first answer becomes what i would stress content words like resembles and rainbow resembles and rainbow good now here you already earned a mark we have already cleared with verbal cues so now we want to go to non-verbal cues because it is how will you perform now number one number one he he is not i is he so you can say you can use now what we call gestures and you say i would point i would point at the crowd to illustrate he i would point at the cloud or at the crowd or i will point to the uh, towards the crowd when mentioning he when you say i i point towards myself he 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 you point towards the crowd when demonstrating he how again do you say rainbow rainbow you know rainbow is something that is very colorful remember this poem is magnificent bull it is a poem that is bringing happiness so when you are talking about rainbow as beautiful as the rainbow is so you can say i would widen my face to bring happiness when demonstrating the beauty of a rainbow i would widen my face in happiness that is what we call facial expression i would remember we have used gestures i would point towards the crowd we are not saying i would use gestures i would point towards the crowd when illustrating he i would widen my face when to illustrate sorry the beauty of a rainbow ladies and gentlemen those are some of the very major challenging questions that come in poetry of english paper one we are still going to talk about various aspects of the english paper one that is very important for a student or a candidate who is going to sit for exams this year or thereafter now the last part is this somebody asks you this question imagine imagine you are to present the above poem to form ones in your school How 
will you ensure that they enjoy?